Welcome back to another episode of the Big Blue Preview. My name is Nathan Cameron and I'm the Assistant Sports Information Director here at Milligan. This week we sat down with Director of Cross Country and Track and Field, Andrew Craycraft, to reflect on last year's indoor season, the cancellation of the outdoor season, and what you can look forward to in your Big Blue this coming spring. Enjoy. We are here with head coach of cross country and track and field, Andrew Craycraft. How's it going? Hi, good. How, how about yourself? Uh, not bad. Um, just been hanging at home with the dog a whole lot. How <laughs> practice has been for you guys? Surprisingly great. You know, obviously we're dealing with a lot of challenging times right now and, and um, there's a lot that could be going wrong for us, but I felt very fortunate, you know, that this all comes down from the top, you know, the leadership of the university has been fantastic. Just um, creating expectation before the school year started, you know, with uh, Dean of students, uh, campus security, um, university president, uh, athletic director, white. I mean, just awesome team effort to say campus, this is how we have to look. This is the, the protocols that we have to follow. And so, yeah, to answer your question, practices have been pretty smooth. Um, to add to that, I would say we're, we're very fortunate because the roster, the way it's worked out and just sort of the evolution of the program is that we have a good mix of both senior and, and sort of veteran leadership with a pretty strong recruiting class um, on both sides. So just good leadership within the ranks. And, and you know, I have a great staff that, that does a great job communicating the right message and then having, you know, again, the team take the ownership that we need them to take for the, uh, for the training itself to really come together. And so, yeah, I felt fortunate. The NCAA has issued some policies and regulations that have kind of opened up some opportunities for training, which has helped us. And so, um, and shoot, central Illinois fall has been beautiful. I mean, it's it surprisingly it nice out. Yeah. We, We've really lucked out with that. So we've had good weather. We've had um, the athletes just be very mature about, hey, this is a very serious threat and we have to act accordingly. So, you know, this whole bubble concept has taken on all types of different forms. Um, our team, we've got a lot of social, very social people on the team, but I think they've been very disciplined about, hey, there's a certain way that we can interact with others. And, and so, Again, feel very fortunate that we haven't had any major uh, uh, issues with that. Um, so before we get talking about this year, um, let's kind of talk about last year, um, where your outdoor season really didn't, it didn't happen. But the indoor season, you saw some pretty decent success um, with the best finish in school history in the indoor track and field championships up in Bloomington. Um, what did that finish mean to you as a coach? Oh man, hard, hard to put that all into words. Um, the, again, the program has just come along really, really quickly. And obviously that's really great to see as a, as a coach. And, um, it's been really rewarding for our staff. So the year prior, so I guess this would have been 19, we, <clears throat> we finished third indoors. And I think that was, <clears throat> there's, I can't take anything away from finishing runner up, especially to a program like North Central, but the third place was such a shock. We knew we had a great team and we don't do a lot of overselling what could happen, you know, because we talk about process way more than outcome, but the third place finish was the real shock. We knew that we had added some incredible pieces to that third place team. So I guess to answer your question, it was a bigger, almost a bigger moment. And I hate to compare them to get third place because we were seventh the year before. Mm -hmm. And so the runner up was amazing. We had learned so much about what it, what it was that got us that third that we're able to use to follow up with the, you know, the next year. Um, the team, I think, was a little hungry, too, because we went from third indoors in 19 to fourth outdoors. And I don't think that sat, sat well with too many people. So um, it was incredible. I mean, runner up, you know, we were seventh and eighth just about every year prior. And 
just really battling being in kind of the basement of the, of the conference. So amazing moment. And just when I look back at the meet, there's so many amazing performances. It's, I can't, I don't single out anything. I just think about the energy of the team. And the thing that really our program is, I think become known for is our, our energy. When we were at meets, it's what's the blue team doing? What's, where's all that noise coming from? It's the blue team again. You know, it's, uh, who are those people chanting and dancing and, and, and singing songs and, and having a good time at, the, at, at basically a 16 hour, two day meet it's the blue team. You know, the energy that we bring is, is incredible. We have so many cool personalities on the team. And I think that the message we try and send to them is you are your, your individual personality is the team. So let it shine through and let's see it and let's see that energy and let's get behind each other. And um, so we learned so much about how we got that third place finish and we just refine that. And so yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. There were so many cool moments and, um, yeah, we're just very thankful, very thankful. And, and, you know, I think too, like hum humbled because we realize it's gonna be very difficult to do something like that again, um, mm -hmm. and, and maybe improve upon it. So, um, so two years in a row then, um, after that third place finish, um, and then last year's second place finish your men's coaching staff, which is, I mean, it's just your coaching staff, but you were named uh, the men's coaching staff of the year for indoor track twice in a row. Um, how did that feel to get that recognition? Um, and then kind of second question adding on to that is, what's it like to work with your coaching staff um, and what does each of them bring to the table? Obviously, amazing feeling to get that recognition. It's it's sort of a peer based uh, recognition. You know, the coaches uh, vote on that, and I think it speaks a lot to the to the coaching body of our conference. They're just amazing people. Um, I would say the majority of the coaches in our conference have been at their programs for a long time. Uh, they they are masters of craft. I mean, they really are uh, amazing people, amazing leaders. The sportsmanship in our conference is unreal. I mean, it's it's very unique to have a coaching staff of the year award go out to the non-winning team. Mm -hmm. And so, again, I think it speaks to the quality of person and and sportsmanship and and I guess respect level that we have as a coaching body. So I really give a lot of credit to the other coaches in the conference um, for just being stand-up people. That you know they've been very welcoming to me as as one of the newer coaches. And um, obviously we really appreciate it, but yeah, I mean, definitely <laughs> the coaching staff has been an amazing, um, amazing piece to this whole thing. Uh, each one of them brings something very unique. You know, uh, uh, Nikki Westein and I have worked together. Um, I was only here about six to eight months, somewhere in that range before she came on and She's been a perfect fit. I, I think I described her to somebody at one point as the other side of my brain, the brain, the side of the brain that doesn't work for me <laughs> is where Nikki comes in. Um, she, she's got the organizational piece together. She's got the energy side. I mean, the team really feeds off of her. Um, she's got like a spunk that I don't have. I, I, I don't know how I come off, but I'm not her. Um, and the team loves it. They react really well to her. She's so much fun to be around and and she comes from a, 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 a past of her tradition and her background of excellence. She knows what it entails. So she's brought the, the right attitude here and, and then really, really has brought the sprinters, hurdles, relays along really well. In fact, for a while, she was coaching the jumpers as well. She's really kind of put on too many hats um, to name. Uh, Terry Abraham came on two seasons ago amazing. We call her the coolest coach on the staff um, for good reason. <laughs> she is cooler than the others, uh, myself included. Um, just very relatable, but has that, that wise, mature, I've got this covered, you know, we're going to handle business um, kind of attitude. And she was a heck of athlete herself and, and, and really understands the technical side of the sport and, and really how to coach the athlete mentally. So, um, if you ever hang around Coach Terry at a meet and hear some of her sayings, some of her cues on how to get the technique right, you'll probably crack up because 
<laughs> they're very creative. Uh, but immediately, even if you're not her athlete, immediately you, you hear the cue and you're like, oh, I know what to do. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, so Terry's been awesome. Uh, Ksenia, um, our throws coach, same thing. I mean, again, when I use the, the phrase masters of craft, for someone as young as she is, technically very savvy. And the athletes, I think, acknowledged that right away and said, I need to shut up and listen. You know, not that they were talking a lot to start with, but they, they realized here's, here's a person who comes from an excellent background, had a ton of success, and really spent a lot of her college life thinking, I need to understand this on another level because I think I'd like to do the instruction part of this once I get done as, an, as a competitive athlete. So she's done a great job with her throwers. We had a huge, two huge performances from the throws that were totally unexpected going into that indoor meet. Um, and then Caleb Ferguson's our new distance coach. Um, we really miss Dylan LaFon. He was a great addition to our staff, but uh, as graduate assistant, you know, 10 years work, we, we, we lost Dylan to graduation and he's on to bigger and better things. And, um, but they've both been great, very different people, but bring a lot of value. And I think the thing that keeps coming out of my mouth is the perspective they've all brought. They've all had a level of excellence in what they did prior to coming to Millican and, and they, and they know so much about what that entails. And they brought that into the equation and it's really worked. And, and again, at the end of the day, I think that the most important thing besides, Hey, we need to be the best of the, the best that we can be is good they're just good people high character moral compass you know like just good people sending the right message mentoring our young people in things way beyond the sport um so last year you were in well i guess it was earlier this year uh, you were in winston-salem north carolina kind of a homecoming for you of sorts um mm -hmm. being a grad out there um but you were with you're three All-Americans to compete at the national championships. Um, and what was it the day before the day of that it got canceled? And I mean, just kind of awful all around. What, what was that like for you to have to tell the team and then just to kind of have to kind of pack up and, and kind of wait around and see what was going to happen? It there's something about my personality that always holds out hope when you're, when you're getting just trickles of bad news. And that's kind of what had been happening that day. It was the day before, you know, first they announce um, no spectators. Then they announce, Hey, we might be revised. I think they announced that they might be revising the schedule slightly or something along those lines. And, and, and again, you kept hearing the news. This is March. This is when things were starting to really hit and, and the virus was making its way heavily into the, into the U.S. Um, kept holding out hope. I think Nikki was in the same camp. She and I were together out there and um, kept help, holding out hope and around five o'clock yeah, when we got the news. Yeah, it, it was like somebody just, it was just a total gut punch. I mean, I, I don't know how to describe it. Um, of the three athletes, um, Jordan and Haley were first time qualifiers. Jordan being a freshman, I mean, that was his first track season ever. Probably his qualifying jump was, I don't know, maybe the fifth time he had ever jumped in college. Um, I think he, I think he handled it pretty well. You could tell he was disappointed, uh, but I think he handled it really well. Haley, She's a little bit more quiet. I think she internalizes a lot of it. Um, but I think she realized, hey, I've got, I'm only starting. I'm only just getting started with how good I can be. And so that was, I think she did a pretty good job and put things into perspective. And just seeing how she trained in the off season tells me that she's got the maturity to understand and, and overcome it. Mackenzie was a little bit harder. Um, I think that was her fourth NCAA, NCAA qualifying Um and she, I think she went and ranked fourth, just seeing the training, knowing where she was at. Um, that one hurt pretty bad because she was in a position where we didn't know how anything could happen based on her fitness, based on her ability, based on maybe more important than anything else, her confidence. She was ready. 
she was so ready. I've never seen her so ready. And so that one, that one was a little different, you know, junior year, a um, little bit more riding on it, I guess. So yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Just, just kind of, and you know, as a coach, you feel it with the athlete, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're it's, it's like you're one and the same. So it was tough. And, and um, that's not why we went to North Carolina to just come back home. But um, like you said, you know, that's my, that's my college home. And um, we got to eat well while we were out there. So I guess if there's a silver lining to anything, we got some, some delicious North Carolina barbecue. We got some Bojangles. If you've ever had Bojangles before. I've delicious. heard of it. Never had it. Never. Okay. Never. So, Find yourself an opportunity to do so. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it was tough. Yeah. So does coming back this year after um, the cancellation of the outdoor season, um, does that kind of spark a new fire under your team? Um, the, like, you, I know you said earlier that your team's hungry, but like, are they, are they more hungry than in years past? Do, like, do you notice something a little different? I do. I, I, I think the way to measure it is, you know, you have so much distraction. There's mm-hmm. so much going on in the world. There's so many reasons. I mean, a college student's life is busy as it is. You know, you've got family, you've got school, you've got work, you've got everything going on. There's so much to distract you from. This is your, this is also your commitment. The thing I've been really inspired by is the team's diligent diligence and commitment to each other. And so when we, when, when they were sent home in March, I would say a large majority of the athletes went back many of them stayed on campus because we were open to that, stayed in their bubbles, stayed safe. And we sent them a training plan that they did pretty much on their own Mm -hmm. that mimicked an outdoor season. They followed through with it. They did time trials. A lot of them performed really well, you know, so the commitment was definitely there. The, the, the hunger was there because I think, yeah, we had done some things historically that had never happened on this campus. And, and they knew that um, you need to capitalize on that momentum. So this fall has been a continuation of that. You know, we've obviously had some um, collateral damage with the pandemic and, and, and all that that brings to people's lives. But I've been really, really impressed with how focused the team's been. And the, the cross-country team did a wonderful job. We had a virtual um, conference meet, if you want to call it that, and was really impressed with how they performed. You know, we had some talent coming back, new talent coming in, and, and they, they heeded the, the, the message. It was, it was, guys, we have an opportunity. We are this good. You've trained this hard. Don't let that go to waste. And um, they've taken that message and really, really run with it. That was a nice pun there. <laughs> I almost stopped myself. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I tried. There's uh, got to be a better way to say that as a, as a running coach. You know? <laughs> so uh, kind of like continuing the whole coming back stronger this year. Um, you have a really solid core of returning athletes um, in track and field, um, including Mackenzie and Haley, uh, the All-Americans. Um, and then on your men's team, just to name a couple, um, and you can name many more, I'm sure. Uh, but Jackson and Ben, um, I mean, what, what do you see as the strengths of the program with so many returners? I think – Culturally, we've had a lot of great individuals come through the Millican track and field program over the decades that we've existed. Many, many. I mean, we have an Olympian alumnus. I mean, who gets to say something like that? What I think we've really done a great job of in recent years, and all the credit goes to the coaching staff and the the athletes, is recognizing that everybody's going to gravitate to the medium. And so if we want to be excellent, our meeting has to be damn good. Um, When you got, when you have guys like Jackson to lead up the sprints group, it's no longer, Oh, well, that's Jackson. He's just awesome all the time. It's no, I need to do what Jackson's doing. I need to live that lifestyle. I need to train that hard. I need to listen to him because he can teach me. 
they're doing those things. You know, same thing with Ben. Ben's been a great leader, uh, leader for the middle and long distance group. Um, and continues to come into his own as an, as a, as an individual athlete, everybody's really been doing that, you know? So I think to differentiate how maybe we've missed some opportunities in the past, people are recognizing if you want to be excellent, surround yourself with excellence. And so I think we're utilizing the, uh, the incredible people that we have on the team and everybody's really getting on board with that. And this fall has been a really good reminder of that. We've had some really exciting things happening with training. Uh, where where do you see the most improvement from last year coming into this year? Um, oof, man, good question. So it's hard not to point to the women's distance side. Um, you know, as I as I mentioned, we had a a virtual conference meet where the teams ran a five k more or less a 5k time trial on their individual tracks. And then we compile the results. The women in a head to head cross country race last year at conference finished eight. Um, it was very disappointing. It, it certainly didn't showcase what I thought we were capable of this year. They were third and it, it's been a, a crazy year. I'm sure other campuses are struggling with a lot of things just like we are. Um, but it's a testament to our women's distance program watched our men finish third and break some incredible records and, and set some amazing history. Um, and they celebrated with the men. And I, it was a beautiful thing to watch. They were so happy for the guys. And yet I, along with them and, and the rest of the, we were heartbroken for them, you know? So I think we had a moment after that, after the enjoyment of, of celebrating with the men of, enough's enough it's our time now mm -hmm. the women's distance program from last year doubled down culture work ethic everything you know the conversations that were happening and then we were fortunate enough to bring in a very very strong recruiting class with a lot of depth and those women took to the program in an amazing way so um to talk about improvement, that's that's the first thing that comes to mind. I, I oversee the distance runner, so it's easier for me to talk about that too. But, um, but yeah, the women's distance program, they want to be legit and they're acting like it on a day-to-day -day basis. I see it in, in, you know, how they're responding to when we bring recruits on campus. You know, I've got somebody coming in and in less than an hour and people are excited about it. I had somebody come in on Saturday and they were excited about them. Um, so yeah, that's that's probably the thing that comes to mind first and foremost. Um, I think we'll we'll do a good job of continuing to develop the things that we've really been good at. The long sprints on the women's side, um, the men's distance side continues to improve. Uh, we have a lot of seasoned jumpers coming back that are going to do really really well. Um, Marshawn, um, who won the long jump last year, is I don't think he had all the conditioning under his belt he needed more time. I think, I think we're going to see something really special from him and man, he's hungry. Um, Bria Blackwell, two time NCAA qualifier who missed the year due to injury. He's going to be on fire. A um, lot of exciting things as far as that goes. So yeah, excited about all that. Haley's going to be great. Just yeah. <laughs> Lots to be excited about. And we, and again, you know, some good freshman recruits that came in on the, on the sprints um, and throw aside. That's a nice segue into my next question, which is um, just kind of talk about your incoming class this year. What what are some of the recruits like? Really good energy, really good energy. Um, like I said, the women's distance side, amazing. Um, these guys found each other right away and just, hey, this is, this is our family. We've got to protect this. We've got to cultivate the right things. Um, two of the women in that women's distance class came from California and they, they committed to Millican sight unseen, which I think is really unique. Um, you know, I was, I was probably more worried for them than they were about, you know, homesickness and, and, you know, dealing with the pandemic where maybe some of the classes were, or maybe more than most of the classes were going to be remote. I don't know if it was ever discussed, honestly, I think I worried about, about it more than they did. Um, in fact, a story I've had to tell quite a bit in the last few days, um, two of those women that came from California were in tears having to leave their teammates for Thanksgiving break. 
you know, and I'm reminding them, hey, aren't you excited to go see family, your family back in Cal? It's warm there. You're going to go back to beautiful weather. And coach, we're going to miss the team. So, you know, just a good warm feeling for, for us as a team to see, hey, this thing really worked for us. Um, yeah, women's distance side was awesome. Had some great local talent come in. Uh, Quincy Collins from Mattoon, somebody who's been on our radar. Her, her, her brother wrestled here. He was awesome. Cooper Collins. Um, just an awesome family. The type of family you have to have be a part of your family or uh, you just won't take the news very well if they don't come. <laughs> um, so anyway, just a great, great couple of additions on the women's distance side. The men culturally distance side, great additions. Um, Braden Olmstead came from Bloomington, you know, local guy, slid right in, has, has been such a grinder. Um, but yeah, even just some surprises. Caleb Childers is a guy from right down the road. He grew up in... Um, in Riverton, Illinois, and you know, just right Springfield area. Uh, his high school coach put put him on our radar because he'd only competed in track at all ever twice, two meets. <laughs> um, and his coach is like, "Hey, nobody's going to know about this person, but he is an athlete, and he's raw. And take him, and he's going to be great for you." So. You, you still don't know where you're getting, right? Well, Caleb has been a team guy. He's been energy, energy, energy. He's the loudest person to practice clapping, cheering, yelling. He's, he's got an amazing amount of upside. And he's taking care of it in the classroom as well. He's just been everything you wanted. And we love homegrown talent. For a guy that's from 45 minutes away, we love that. Uh, so Kayla's been a lot of fun. Uh, Kayla Green's been another great one. She's a high jumper from the Chicago area. Um, really strong student. She's added a nice, a nice piece to the, um, to the jumps group. So um, yeah, there's too many to name. Ry Johnson's another guy from right down the road. Monticello is a short sprinter. Um, great energy. Maddie Russellberg from Yorkville. Hurdler. The women's hurdles group. Insane energy all the time. Insane. <laughs> uh, you know, when you're up on the track at, on Millikan's campus, if it gets loud enough, whatever's happening on that football field, that's echoing off the academic buildings. I'm pretty sure the hurdles group is, is getting some echo. Um, yeah, just fun, just fun. And again, the team has done a great job of, you show up to practice and you leave the issues and the challenges and the struggles that our world is facing at, at the door. And you step in and you say, these are my people, let's go to work. So all the credit to them and, you know, we're fortunate the energy has been good and that, and the mindset's been good, but go back to the beginning of the conversation, the leadership of campus is allowed for that. So. What are you most excited for, um, for this next season after kind of a season off last year? Um, obviously, I mean, I'm sure you're just excited to be back at it, but um, is there anything specifically that you're really excited to see? I always debate whether I want to put something out there, <laughs> you know, with questions like this. Um, I mentioned earlier our women, uh, the long sprinters on the women's side. We've, we've developed a pretty good group of long sprinters, uh, quarter milers. We really want to get a four by four to nationals on the women's side. Um, we took a run at it last indoor season, didn't quite have the pieces to do that. Um, but we knew that we we're very, very potentially a, a year away from that. So all there's about seven of them in that group. When I talk about long sprinters that would be on in a relay pool for the four by four, we lost one of them who was a big, a big piece for us, Morgan powers. Um, but many of the return, most of the returners have come back with a vengeance. I mean, again, Haley Wimberly, Mackenzie Dixon, Aaron Renison, Green Abergy, um, just really, really good, deep talent of, of, of athletes that can really help us. So yeah, taking a relay to nationals, such a fun experience. I don't, I'm almost a hundred percent certain Millikan's never taken a women's four by four. Really want to do that. Really want to do that. Um, I want Millikan to be on the, on the national map for middle distance. Uh, Mackenzie has a real opportunity in, ahead of her. Ben Cooksman should have been at a national championship last year. Um, would love to see those guys go. Uh, Alyssa Ruiz is, is one of our freshman women. I think she can do it. Um, maybe not her freshman year, but certainly in the near future, she's, she's a phenomenal miler. Um, again, Marshawn and Bria in the jumps, 
those are national caliber athletes. Uh, Jackson and the short sprints, national caliber athlete. And many of them were on the descending order list indoors and were just outside of qualifying. So yeah, <laughs> they're ready. They're, they're ready and they're hungry. Uh, okay. So just to kind of wrap up, I've, I've been doing this in my head. I've been wanting to do this with each team. Um, describe your team in just one word. And if you have two, cause you have a couple teams, um, you know, men's and women's of each. If you have different words for, you know, different, different parts of the team, then I guess we'll let that one count. Energy. I, I don't know if I can do it better than that. I think the, the alternate, if I had to have like a, like a B option, it would be unique. Um, I can't stress that enough. You know, when you come and watch us at a track meet, we come together and we are obnoxious. I, I, we're very respectful. I think, you know, I, myself and the staff have to remind the athletes it, it's about sportsmanship first and foremost, but people come and watch us and they, and they, they scratch their heads a little bit. They go, what has gone into those, those blue folks over there? They are, they, they look like they've lost their minds. And um, I just love that about them. And we, we try and set the tone right away. So whatever the first event is in the meet, you know, last year, Joey Davies, who's become a phenomenal multi-event athlete. He was third at conference indoors. Um, Joey came to us as a distance runner. That's what I recruited him for. But it's weird. I've talked about wrestling once already, and you just had a, a conversation with Bert. Um, Joey was a wrestler in high school. He was a medalist, the state medalist in high school. Um, he just has that mentality. So anyway, Joey was the very first guy to compete at our indoor conference meet. And the night before the meet, we said to the team, guys, Joey needs to be on our shoulders from the start to the finish. And they did that to their credit. Um, he's the kind of guy you want leading the charge, you know, but, uh, energy, unique, um, fire. I don't, those are all good words. I mean, I could, hard to settle on one, but maybe energy is the, is the one I come to. All right. Well, I think that's a, that about does it. Um, thank you for doing this. And, um, I know that myself and many other people are looking forward to see, uh, how you guys do this year. I appreciate the time. I enjoyed the conversation and yeah, I appreciate the people following and supporting the team. It's been really fun to reconnect with alum and, and just fans of the, of the sport and families. We've got a great group of families that are so committed to making it to the meet. That's going to be hard about the indoor season. We're, we're, we're going to be competing from what it looks like. We've developed a plan to do that, but um, spectators is not, is not looking like a viable thing until at least we get to outdoor season. So just want people to know that have been fans and family and, and alumni and supporters. Um, we see you, we recognize you, we appreciate what you've done for us and we're going to keep hustling for you. Beautiful. Great ending. Andrew Craycraft, track and field, cross country. Thank you. Thanks, and, uh, hey, have a nice holiday break. Yeah, you too. It's good seeing you.